。千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Previously, we talked about the right path. When we discussed the right path, I also mentioned this slide that you see. This is the right path from a Buddhist rather than Taoist perspective. This is what was taught by the Buddha roughly 2,500 years ago, at the same time that Lao Tzu lived. Except that the Buddha, the original Buddha that founded Buddhism, lived in India, very far away in ancient times because of geographical distance. So the two did not know about one another, Buddha and Lao Tzu. It was only much, much later on when in ancient China there would be fusion, synthesis. Encounters between the two great traditions, Buddhism and Taoism, Buddhist teachings and Tao philosophy. So now, with this particular slide that we talked about last time, because our subject was the right path, how do you figure out what the right path is in life? So in Buddhism, the answer is what is known as the Noble Eightfold Path. In Chinese, Ba Zhen Dao, it just means the eight right paths. So the translation into English is really adding more to it than was in the original,、uh, maybe as an attempt to dress it up. This happens all the time. So even something as well known as Sun Tzu, the ancient art of war, the original title has no art, and actually has no war. So the translation dresses it up to make it seem more than what it, what it actually was in the beginning, and possibly to make the classic a little more attractive to a new readership in a different language. So back to the noble eightfold path. What do we talk about? Well, the eight right paths, as you can see, that we went through, was all about right view, right resolve, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So this is a common way to. Dispense to disseminate dharma in Buddhism. Things are spelled out and given to the followers. So there's nothing wrong with this particular approach. It's a list of one item after another, and this is what I characterize as sort of a. One-dimensional way of looking at life. It's that's it. This is the list. That's all there is to it. The advantage is that this is easy to understand, easy to follow, and this is suitable for an audience that will simply do what it is told. The Tao is a little different. The Tao concept, the Tao paradigm, the thinking is that. All of us studying the Tao, we all have to do some work. We all have to figure out stuff for ourselves. So things are not as spelled out as they tend to be in the Buddhist practice. We have to use our brains and figure it out. So it's no longer one-dimensional, as I characterized before. In the Tao, being a little bit different. Not spelled out, not handed to you, because Lao Tzu 
tended to think ways that are more multidimensional. Why is that? Well, because life, reality, and existence, these are all complex, multidimensional things that we encounter and deal with on a daily basis. To make the Tao more in, in accordance with reality, with everyday life, Lao Tzu would sometimes take a slice from the complex overall structure and highlight that. So even when it's a travel-based metaphor, we talked about previously how the Tao, meaning the way, is depicting this journey. It's a travel-based metaphor the life journey, even when it is that, there's still more than one dimension to it in the way that Lao Tzu taught. So let me talk about the right path from the Tao perspective that we studied in 53, and then I will illustrate how to link that to the paradigm that we're using in 54. So that's the reason why I'm using this recap to do that. This is, this is a value, this will illustrate the way that thinking is done by Lao Tzu and the thinking that when we gain the right level of skill, we begin to think in the same way. So chapter 53, the right path. What I have done is that I've positioned the original text to the left and the right and I want to use that to accompany the illustration of how this works, this multi-dimensional view. In this case, it's going to be an extra dimension. So all the texts in red are basically counterexamples given by Lao Tzu to talk about what not to do and how not to be, which in turn tells us what we should do how we should be. So let me give you an example. In the beginning of 53, it says the courts are corrupt. So this is the ancient metaphor where the courts being corrupt leads to a whole bunch of negative consequences, negative effects. When we look at a metaphor like that, there are two things that we need to do. Number one, we have to recognize that Lao Tzu is using a metaphor to talk about life. So in this case, basically Lao Tzu is saying, well, listen, your life is your kingdom. You are the ruler. If the ruler is corrupt, it's gonna lead to all kinds of bad things in the kingdom, which is, again, your life. The second thing that you have to do in your mind when you look at this example, these uh, counterexamples from Lao Tzu, is to recognize that Lao Tzu is talking about the wrong way. So if you reverse them, you end up figuring out what the right way is in life. So the course being corrupt is the first example. Then when we do that mental translation, we figure out that, oh, well, this is actually about life. That we don't want to live our life that is straying away from the Tao, hence being corrupt. So what we have to do is to live one's life with integrity, a life that is without the negative kind of chaos that corruption can bring. It's an orderly, balanced and harmonious kind of life. So that is the first step in what Lao Tzu would call the right path in life. Lao Tzu then says, well, the courts being corrupt leads to the fields being neglected. The farmers are not working the fields because of the corruption from their rulers. Again, we do that translation. This is really talking about life. The fields worked on by the peasants. That's really talking about the work that we have to do in life. So then to reverse that, 
if we're able to live life with integrity, then the right path in life will lead naturally to us doing productive and positive work. And when I say work, I mean your chosen field of work, whether it's your career or maybe personal projects, you know, something that that's meaningful to you. And when you're able to do work meaningfully, productively, you get results. The negative counter example is that when the fields were neglected, it leads to the warehouses being empty. So there's cause and effect that we're looking at here. Corruption in the courts, leading to the fields not being worked on, leading to the warehouses being empty. Reversing that, the right path, living life with integrity, leads to doing productive and meaningful and positive work. And that in turn leads us to an abundantly filled warehouse, which in our case just means that we are in a position to receive abundant prosperity. So that right there spells out cause and effect one after another, one leading to the next. So it is again the travel metaphor. So you get a starting point, you get some kind of a, a way station and then a destination, meaning like a goal. So you can think of it as, well, what if I want to, what if I start out in San Francisco and I want to travel uh, southbound, passing through Los Angeles to San Diego. So that will be the travel-based metaphor. So I mentioned that this is, this has one extra dimension and that, that was definitely in 50, chapter 53. So Lanza talks about how the corrupt officials wear binaries. And that's a metaphor for putting on a false facade or projecting a superficial front. The reverse of that is that in life, one has to be authentic. You have to be genuine, cannot be superficial. Don't be, you know, quote unquote, don't be phony, don't be fake, gotta be real. This is actually related to the first, the first item on the left that you see there. When you live your life with integrity, with self-honesty, that is the very definition of being authentic, being genuine. So, the two are connected, so the arrow goes in both directions. So the items, the dimension on the right-hand side is not so much like a travel-based metaphor where you lead from one to the next. They're connected only by the order that Lao Tzu talks about them. So being authentic and the next item, collaborating with others, one doesn't lead to the other. They are independent. They can happen at the same time or at different times. The second one is where Lao Tzu te talks about the corrupt officials carrying sharp swords. That's a metaphor for intimidation, domineering approach to your interactions with other people. The reverse of that is to get along with everyone, to work together with them, to collaborate in a spiritual, in, in the spirit of harmony. You can see now that it's easily connected with the second part of the right path to do productive and positive work. Obviously they're linked. And then the third thing that Lao Tzu talks about is, is overindulgence, overconsumption by the corrupt officials. The reverse of that is that if you want to live your life right, you can still enjoy all the good things in life, but you want to do so in moderation. That obviously is interconnected with the third and last part. The full warehouse, the reverse of the empty warehouse, means that your life is full of abundance, prosperity, and goodness, things to enjoy, 
that you enjoy in moderation. Now you can see how this other dimension feeds into the first dimension. And then there's one more, one more thing that Lao Tzu talks about, and that is hoarding excessive wealth. The, the opposite of that, the reverse of that, is to be able to share your resources, be able to help other people. This is in the spirit of compassion. So not the same as everything that went on before. It's a separate thing. It's independent, but it is definitely linked to the last part, the full warehouse, the warehouse full of abundance and prosperity. Now you can see, as I do, how everything makes a beautiful kind of sense. Everything is linked together. Everything is a structure. There's more than one way to look at a situation because that's exactly how life is. So now let me illustrate how this is connected with what we're going to talk about today in 54. It's yet another different way to look at it. So it's no longer the attributes of each way station in the journey. It's a different view. So the title for this slide, 53 to 54. So I want to use, I want to start out with a travel-based metaphor and then show everyone what it looks like when you look, when you look through the perspective of chapter 54. And it starts like this. The starting point in this travel-based metaphor is that you get your car. So here, let me just uh, tell you about a friend of mine. Uh, I'll call him John, not his real name. So John is a big fan of comic books and science fiction, same as I was, especially in my teenage years. So John and his friends want to go on a trip to Comic Con, this vast convention with all the celebrities, all the previews, all the exciting stuff. So they make their plans, and John gets a car. He has to carry a lot of his friends, so he gets a an SUV that seats seven people. He's got six friends that he wants to drive from San Francisco to San Diego. So then the starting point is the basics. He gets his car, this rental SUV. He's not familiar with it, but he can drive. So he drives it around, picks up his friends. He picks up two friends in San Francisco. Then they drive. They drive down to Los Angeles, where they have four other friends that they pick up. So the circle of influence in the Tao practice here equivalent to the number of people as passengers in the vehicle goes from a few people picking up the people in the friends in San Francisco to picking up more people uh, in Los Angeles. So halfway point in this case is Los Angeles picking up more people, meaning now the car is nearly full and the influence of the Dow cultivator is expanding to include more people, positive effect on more people. This is also uh, a message to all of us that it's not enough just to mind our own business, that we have an obligation. If we, if we see something that is working, if we have ideas and concepts and understanding that we can share with others, we should. So continuing the, with this metaphor, arriving at the destination, San Diego Comic Con, where John and his friends meet up with all of their other friends from out of state. That's even more people, and that's destination. So by now, their group is dozens of people. It starts with just one person, John, 
continues adding two of his friends, three people now, then picking up more friends. Now it's an SUV full of fans. Then arriving at the destination, meeting a whole bunch of other people, dozens of other people. Now, let me point out one thing. The left and the right, the diagram on the left and the diagram on the right, it's talking about the same journey. It's just a different perspective. It's just a different way to look at that same trip. So in chapter 54, we're transitioning from the travel-based metaphor of 53 as a metaphor to the expanding circle of influence that you see on the right. But I think you can see what I'm driving at. Whether we talk about it one way or the other way, we're talking about the exact same Tao as before. The exact same thing. The same life journey that we're all engaged in right now. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.